thing around where they can see me. Okay, perfect. Let me go and start here on IG as well so they know I'm live. Now remind me once we go live here that I need to move IG phone over there for a second. Um, Okay, let's go live on TikTok as well. Start there. Okay. All right. I think we are live now. Okay. So we are live. It's Tuesday. It's almost Christmas day. Santa Claus. Everybody's in Santa Claus land. Everybody driving around trying to buy their last, last second face or last second Christmas gifts for the family. And it's pretty wild out there. So we're going to go live today. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you, write this down, seven questions that you can use to disrupt vendor relationships. Now, what do I mean by that if you sell B2C compared to B2B, okay? How do you sell to a prospect that loves the company they're already with? So let's say you sell anything and they already have something from a competitor of yours or a different company and they love what they already have. How do you get them to break that trust with their current company or vendor they're with and become open to your solution? Well, it's quite easy if you have the right tone with the right questions. It's pretty damn hard if you don't. So today I'm gonna give you a little nibble I'm going to give you a little hors d'oeuvres compared to what our clients who are in your industry learn in our virtual training and group training platforms. All right. All right. So we're going live here on my desktop on StreamYard. We're going live in our Facebook group, Sales Revolution. We've got about 41, 42,000 of you in there. We're going live in our Facebook business page. There's around 80,000 of you in there. My Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Love you guys there on YouTube and LinkedIn as well. We're going to go live here on Instagram. What's up, everybody? I love my Instagram followers. You know, we weren't even on Instagram up until about 14 months ago. And now we have like 255, 256,000 of you run around in there. Love you guys. And we love you guys on TikTok. We've been on TikTok now for about four or five months. There's maybe 65 or 70,000 on you there. All right. So I'm going to give you seven questions. I wrote them out on this board here. And I'm going to explain where to use each one. Now, some of them you're only going to use if you sold B2B. And some of them you'll only use if you sold B2C, business to consumer. And some of you will only use them if you sell business to business. I will point out the differences and why uh, why you do one or the other for what you sell. All right. Now, if you are brand new to the Facebook group or YouTube, you just started following me in the Facebook group or YouTube or LinkedIn or IG, what's up? Or let's say if you're, uh, do I train in the education industry? Yes. We train 158 different industries. I'm being sarcastic. We train 158 industries. According to Forbes, guess how many industries there are? 158 with subsets of those. We are in all of those. Okay, we are not a small company anymore. We train tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of reps. We even have some companies where we train like 25,000 of their salespeople. Okay, education industry is a big industry we train in. Just so you know, hopefully that answers your question. All right. All right. Back to the subject. So if you're brand new, follow me anywhere. Okay. You don't know who the hell I am in this pink. No, it's a salmon shirt. Don't make fun of my pink shirt. It's salmon. It's a salmon color. So I'm Jeremy Miner. I'm the founder of Seventh Level. I used to be the founder and chairman, but I got replaced as the chairman of the board. I'm not even the chairman of my own company anymore. I'm just the freaking founder. I got demoted. What's going on? All right. So I'm the founder of Seventh Level. So we're a sales training organization that trains salespeople exactly like you watching me right here. So we train salespeople like you. We train sales management like you, sales executives like you, sales leadership like you, entrepreneurs, business owners, consultants, coaches. And we train you and your teams how to sell using specific techniques and questions that work with human behavior, what do I even mean by that, rather than work against it? Are the words you're using, are the questions you're asking triggering your prospect to emotionally shut down and stay surface level with you and say, I want to think it over at the end? We're going to show you why that happens. Now, that's called the NEPQ. That stands for Neural Emotional Persuasion Questioning. We have to teach you the right tone because there's certain parts of your sales process where it's more of a curious tone when you ask a question. And then there's other parts of your sales process, more of a skeptical, challenging tone 
when you're asking a question. And then there's other parts of your sales process where you lean in and it's more of a concern tone, one that shows more empathy. Now, do you know when and what questions you ask with what tone? Because if you don't, you're losing deals that are clients who sell what you do. They make those every day. So we're going to talk about that. Now, uh, if you're on the live right now, what I want you to do is go down to your phone because I know you guys are on your phone and I want you to post hashtag live. So if you're on the live right now, go neuro emotional persuasion questioning in EPQ. So if you're on the live right now, go post hashtag live. And if you're on the replay, I want you to go post hashtag replay. So if you're on the live, I better see hundreds of hashtag lives and I better see hundreds of hashtag replays or you know, I live in Scottsdale. My, our offices are here in Scottsdale, Arizona. It's really nice. I could go out and golf today. I could even golf in the salmon shirt. So if you're on the live right now, post hashtag live. If you're on the replay, go post hashtag replay. I also want you to go smash the heart button. And I want you to smash the like button. So go smash the heart button. Go smash the like button. And if you want to acquire the skills that our clients are, if you want to start making, so if you want to start making your first 10 grand a month in your industry, and I'm serious, like every month, okay? If you want to start making your first 15 grand a month in your industry or your first 20 grand a month each month, or let's say you want to start making 25 or 30 grand a month in your industry or 40 or 50,000 plus every single month with what you sell now, because I can assure you we have clients in your industry that make that every single month like clockwork now. They just have the right skills. You want to acquire those skills, message me directly right now, okay? So message me directly right now. If you're on IG or TikTok, message me directly right now. If you're on LinkedIn or the Facebook group or my Facebook or the Facebook business page, message me directly right now. If you can't figure out how to message me because YouTube, you can't post hashtag NEPQ, okay? Either myself or one of my stunt doubles, surrogates, will message you back some different training options for your industry if you want to sell a lot more than you are now. Now, if you don't want to sell more, you don't have to. It's a free world we have here, all right? All right, so write this down. We're going to go over seven questions. I'm going to give you seven questions on how to disrupt vendor relationships. Okay. All right. Let me move this IG phone. Well, let me move it over here. Can you guys see me over there? If I moved it over here, I'm going to move the TikTok phone over here. Hopefully you guys can see me. Okay. Balanki, I need your help in here. I don't think I have this. Right. I want to make sure that that other camera can still see here. Yep, when I that put one's that mirrored. Phone. I mirrored. Is this one good though? It's probably like hitting the back of that. Okay, yeah, a little bit. All right, all right. So I'll write these questions down as fast as you possibly can. So whether you sell business to business or business to consumer, you're always going to talk to prospects that already are with one of your competitors or maybe with another company, right? And, and they love that company. Like they're, they don't have any problems on surface. They say they love everything about them. How do you get that prospect to break the trust that they already have with the company they're already using? It's easy once you have the right questions in the right tone. It's extremely hard if you don't. Like you'll hardly ever do it if you don't know how. Okay. All right. Once again, it comes down to learning advanced skills. You have advanced skills. You make 10 times more money than anybody that says what you do. If you don't, you just, you know, you, you, you pound the sand, you know, you don't want to pound the sand anymore. Right? So we're going to give you some NEPQ questions. Now these questions, you're typically going to use them in your problem awareness stage of the conversation. Problem awareness. If you're not familiar with NEPQ, if you're not one of our clients in our virtual training or group training programs. Okay. Uh, NEPQ, the, 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 prob the part where you're helping them find out what their real problems are is called problem awareness. Now, you can also ask some of these in your solution awareness questions, which allow the prospect to see what their future is going to look like once all these newfound problems are solved. Okay, now, let me give you a warning. Some of these examples only work for B2B, and some of them will only work B2C. And I'll show you which ones work well. Okay, so if you sell B2C and you use one of these that only works for B2B, you're not going to get the same result and vice versa. All right. Now, let's start with this one. Okay, and I'm going to show you the right tone here. Okay, I'm going to try to step to the side. Okay, uh, Mary, can I ask how your ideal situation compares to what you have with company XYZ that you're using? Okay, so I'm going to start off here. 
and I'm going to tell you why I'm asking this question. Okay, now some of the this one's not as powerful as some of the ones we get to later on in here. Can I ask how your idea situation compares to what you have now with company XYZ that you're using? Okay, now why would I want to ask that? That's primarily a B2B question. Okay, it's a starting one. It's not too powerful, but it's decent. That opens up the door on what the prospect would want to change and allows you to clarify and probe more off their answer that they're about to give you. Okay, now let's go to this question. It's much better. All right. Now, let me give you an example of why you want to ask this question. Let's say that you meet with a prospect. Okay, let's say, and this is this one right here is primarily for B2B sales. This next one, right? You meet with a company, could be SMB, you could sell. You know, in the SMB market, you could pay, sell to big enterprise companies and they act like they're the best. They're so big. They don't need any help. They've got it all figured out. You know who I'm talking about. If the prospect tells you they're completely happy with what they already have and are using, this is a question you want to ask. OK, just like this. John, help me understand. I mean, you guys have, have already reached these big numbers and milestones with what you've been doing for the past two or three years. Like, where do you want to go from here in terms of future improvements in your blank so that you can blank? Now, notice what I just did with my hands. I'm going to do that again so you can see my hand movements, okay? Typically, if you're selling B2B in that type of situation when you're on a discovery call, you're probably meeting them virtually or in their offices so they can visually see you. OK, so, Amy, help me understand. I mean, you guys have already reached these big numbers and milestones. Look at my hand here, my left hand. You've already reached these big numbers and milestones. Like, where do you want to go from here in terms of future improvements in your blank so that you can get to blank? Now, what did I just do with my hands? I just created a gap. You've already reached. You start here. So you've already reached these big numbers and milestones. Like, where do you feel like you want to go from here in terms of future improvements in your blank so that you can blank? And you're going to repeat back the end result of what you offer. You see how I'm using my hands there? Now, let me give you an example. I'll show you how we use this with really large companies. Okay. We even use this on a Fortune 100 company. It's a very large search engine. We train three of their divisions. Maybe you can guess who that is. Very large search engine, Fortune 100 company. It rhymes with frugal, frugal, okay? You, I'll let you guess who that is, all right? So this is a question we asked them, okay? Because they thought they were doing everything and they're already doing well, but now they we got that those three divisions up by 244% increase in the first quarter, okay? Listen to how we do this. So, so John, I mean, you guys have already reached these big numbers, and milestones with your sales teams in these three divisions, like where do you want to go from here in terms of future improvements in their sales ability so that you can scale these divisions even more? And we created a gap right there. See what we did there? See how that works? Okay. All right. Now the next one is going to be, is this is like a two question process. Okay. So you have to ask these two questions in a row. If you don't ask the two questions in a row, it's not going to make much sense. All right. Now, these two questions I'm about to ask you, okay, these two questions I'm about to ask you are primarily for B2B. I'm going to do a couple more B2B, and then I'm going to show you a couple more B2C, okay? All right. Let me see. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, I put my notes here of what I want you to cover. Okay, so, John, back when you chose to work with that company, like, what was your selection criteria, if I could ask you guys? Well, when we chose to work with company X, we were looking for this, we are looking for that. OK, so this is how you set this up. OK, so just write this down as fast as you can. So back when you guys chose to work with company ABC, can I ask what your selection criteria was just so I have a, a better background? Yeah, when we chose company X and Y and Z, we were looking for A, B and C and and if they could do this and if they could do that. Now, here's the question that you're going to ask right after that. After they tell you what their selection criteria was, you're then going to ask this question. Ah, okay. So as they're talking, you're using verbal cues. Uh-huh. Okay. So in what ways has that possibly changed as you look at your situation today, though? Okay. And I would even put here situation. It's probably better than needs. I don't like the word needs. Needs is like an over your use sales word that every salesperson that sells anything says. Okay. So in what way has that possibly changed as you look at your situation today, though? Now, why would I ask that? 
because the question allows you and them to see and understand that their current situation is different now compared to when they started with that other company or vendor a few years ago. So it opens up the door for them to answer you how their, their situation is different and clarify and probe to help them find problems they didn't think they had. Do you see how that opens the door for you? If you don't know how to set that question up, you're not going to open up doors with most companies if you sell B2B. Okay. And I'm going to show you how to use that B2C because it's a little bit different. All right. Now, also when you tell something, when they tell you something, then they would change. So when they say, oh, well, you know, our situation is a little bit different now and we would probably change this if we could and blah, 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 blah. You want to ask an NEPQ probing question. Okay. This is an NEPQ probe. Okay. It's all in our virtual training courses, all of our group trainings. Like this times 10 billion. I just give you little, little nibbles, little hors d'oeuvres here, just little nibbles here on these, on these free trainings. Can I ask why you would change that? Okay. But why would you change that though? Oh, but help me understand why would changing that? Why so important to you? Okay. That's just an NEPQ probe. All right. All right. Let's go to the next thing. I'm going to give you a couple more. Well, I'm going to give you a couple more B2C. Then I'm going to come back to some B2B ones as well. Okay. All right. So here are a few questions you can ask as well. So if you could change one thing about who you're using now, what would that be in your mind? So if you could change one thing, like if you thought about your idea situation and you could change one thing, what would that be? Now, notice my tone when I asked that question. If I said it fast, if you could change one thing about who you use now, what would that be? Well, I don't know if I'd change anything. They're pretty good. So if you, I mean, if you could, if you could change like one thing about, you know, the results or, or who you're using now in your mind, what would you change? See? See how that comes across a lot differently. I'm thinking about the question I'm asking. I already know what question I'm asking, but I want them to feel that I'm thinking a thoughtful question, which triggers them to open up deeper and actually respond with the truth. Do you see how that means? Uh, Lemuel Robinson, if you want to reach out to us, you got to join the Facebook group. We can't message you on YouTube. So go to salesrevolution.pro. So let me go to salesrevolution.pro, salesrevolution.pro, and just join the free Facebook group and message me there. We can't message you on YouTube. Go to salesrevolution.pro, okay? All right. Now, here's another question you can ask right here. Can I ask in what ways could your vendor possibly do better than what they're doing now? In, in your mind, like if you really thought about it, what ways could they possibly do better than what you're already do, doing with you now? So in your mind, in what ways do you feel like they could do better for you if you could get them to do something good for you or if you could do something better? So in your mind, so can I ask what you'd have them do differently if you really thought about it? See how you'd ask that question just opens up the door. Okay, now here's one very powerful question that I'm going to get you. Like you definitely want to write this down. If you just write this one thing down, this will help you a ton. Especially when, okay, so let me give you an example on what, because this can be used in B2C or B2B, what I'm about to show you. So let's say you do an amazing presentation, whether you sell B2C or B2B, you've taken them through your entire sales process. And they tell you at the end of the presentation, like, you know what, we decided we're going to go a different direction. Or, you know what, we've decided we're going to use XYZ and you find out it's one of your competitors. Or let's say that you have a scheduled proposal or the next step in your process. And then an hour before you get an email and they say, hey, 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 John, hey, Mary, we really appreciate your guys' time. You guys have a great company, but we decided to go with XYZ company. Well, what do you say? Well, it's simple. Okay. Right back here, John, Mary, whoever. So you simply email them back or you say this, John, how would I be able to communicate with you? that you might be making the wrong decision without you getting upset with me. Here's another way to do that. Mary, how would I be able to communicate with you that you might be making the wrong decision without you getting angry at me? Oh, you're not making me angry. Oh, you're not. Guess what they're going to say? Oh, you're not making me upset. What did you have in mind? See, that opens that conversation back up. Make sure you write this down. When I was in B2C and B2B making almost $3 million a month in commissions, I use this all the time. If somebody says, well, we decided to go with XYZ company. Yeah, that's not a problem. Can I ask, John, and I don't want to make you angry at me, but 
how would I be able to communicate with you that you might be making the wrong decision without you getting upset with me? Oh, don't worry, Jeremy. We're not upset with you. What did you have in mind? And it opened the conversation back up. Write that down. That's really important for you, okay, to, to be able to respond to that. All right. Now, let's go to a true truth question. We've got a few more that I'm going to give you that are for B2C and B2B, okay? Now, what do I mean by two truths question? Two truths question is, remember this, your prospects, nobody likes 100% of what they already have or get. There's always something you like that you like now that in a month from now, you don't like as much. You might go buy a new Mercedes G-Wagon and love it today, but in two months from now, you're like, ah, I just don't like it handles on the curves or, you know what, I just, man, the thing sucks gas or, you know what, I don't like this. There's always something you would want to have better about any product or service you've ever bought. Am I right? 100%. All right. So this is called a two-series question. So, John, I mean, to me, it sounds like things are going fairly well with who you're already using now. I mean, is there is there anything you would change about, you know, what they're doing or the results they're getting for you if you if you could. Now, you have to use the right tone with this. Okay, I've got about five more minutes here and I've got to run off and do some reels with Blake. So to me, it sounds like things are going fairly well with who you're already using now. I mean, is there anything you would change about them or the results you're getting from them if you, if you could? Notice how that verbal pauses at the end. Now, is there anything you would change ab about it if you... If you could, I didn't write that on the board, right? But that's all right. Okay, you want a verbal pause there. All right, let me give you a couple industry-specific examples so you can see how I do it to make it industry-specific, okay? Now, once again, we train your industry watching us. We train 158 industries. The only industry we do not train in yet is underwater basket weaving. If you guys have some con connections in the underwater basket weaving industry, let us know. It's the only industry we have not cracked yet. Okay, so here's what you're going to say. So in this example, let's say you sold life insurance. Okay, we trained tens of thousands in that space too. Okay, so Amy, I mean, Tim, and you find out they love their company they're already with. They, they love the coverage they already have. They just love everything about it. Okay, so I mean, Amy, to me, I mean, it sounds like things are going fairly well with the, the coverage you already have. I mean, is there anything you would change about the financial protection or the amount of coverage for the family if you if you could? Well, I mean, we like them, but we're also looking for, okay, but having the additional policy for X and Y and Z, can I ask why it's so important to you now though? See, that's an NEPQ probing question right there. Okay, let me give you another industry specific example and something completely different. You're going to notice that the frame, the structure is 100% the same. We're just tweaking it based on, we're just plugging in the gaps of what the products and services are, okay? So let's say if you sold, if you're a business consultant and you sold consulting services to business owners, SMB companies, that puts in like better systems, better operations, better processing to be able to scale their business. So let's say that they're doing $5 million a month, but they want to go to 10 or 15 or 20 or $30 million a month. Well, you're an outside consultant that works for a big consulting firm that comes in with the team and starts building out their infrastructure better. Let's say you sold that. Completely different than life insurance. Same structure. Okay, so, I mean, Amy, to me, it sounds like things are going fairly well with the systems you guys are already using now. I mean, is there anything you would change about the, the systems you're using or the results you're getting from those if you, if you could? Well, I mean, we don't get me wrong. We like what we're doing, but the reason why we invited you in to talk to us is because we're, and then they tell you more of a problem. Now, that's only if they said they already liked what they were doing. You wouldn't just ask that if they just told you they, what they don't like and why they don't like it. You would never ask a true true question. It wouldn't make any sense there. Now, notice my verbal pause. Is there anything that change about, you know, the systems you're using, the results you're getting if you, if you could? See how I lower my tone there? which triggers them to think deeper about the question. Well, we would change this. Well, okay, but but getting those type of results, why so important to you now? See, that's an NEPQ probe again, okay? Let me give you another completely different industry, okay? It's the same thing. Doesn't matter what you sell. We know how to train every industry at this point with NEPQ, all right? All right, so let's say you sold medical device sales. Now you're talking to the CEO of a hospital or maybe even a doctor, depending on the size of 
or if you're talking to hospitals or more of like a practice, okay? They say, uh, let's say that you sell knee implants. I'm just going to throw something out there, okay? So help me understand. I mean, it sounds like things are going with well with the implants you're already using from XYZ company. Is there anything you would change about the implant or the results that the patients are getting from that if you, if you could? See? Well, I mean, don't get me wrong. We like Vendor X, but, you know, sometimes it's taking us up to four hours for the operation. So we're only able to do one a day. So we're possibly looking for something. If we could lower that down to maybe two and a half to three hours, we could do two operations a day and we would double the profitability in this division. Okay. See how that works. Okay. Hope that helped you guys today. I've got to go over and shoot some Christmas reels for everybody over at the, uh, the corporate apartment just right across the street from here. Uh, look, what I give you on these little reels and trainings, these are just little nibbles compared to what our clients learn who are in the same industry as you. That's why they're out earning you two, three, five times more, even if you're already doing good. So if you want to start making your first 10 grand a month in commissions, you want to start making your first 15 grand every month in your industry, or let's say you're a bigger thinker and you want to start making your first 20 grand a month in commissions, or let's say you want to start making 30, grand a month in commissions or 40 or 50 or 60, maybe even more in your industry. Because we have clients who make that every single month and they don't have cooler hair than you. In fact, some of them are even bald. They don't have better nails. They don't, they're not in more shape. They don't journal six hours a day. They don't meditate and pray three hours a day to get those results, even though praying is important for sure. You know why they get those results? Because they have more advanced skills that they've acquired than you have yet. But guess what? You can acquire the same skills and you acquire the same skills. What do you expect to get? The same results as they are. So if you want to start getting those results, message me directly right now. If you're on IG and TikTok, message me directly right now. If you're on LinkedIn, the Facebook group, the Facebook business page or my Facebook, message me directly right now. If you're on YouTube, you've got to join the free Facebook group because you can't message us on YouTube. So I'm going to have some people, I'm going to have somebody on the team post the, uh, yeah, salesrevolution.pro. All right. So just go to sales revolution.pro. So go to salesrevolution.pro. Thanks for dumping that in there. Can I have Val or Felicia uh, dump in that to IG and TikTok? Go to salesrevolution.pro. Uh, so if you're on IG, if you're on TikTok, you got to go to salesrevolution.pro. No homo, but I love you, man. I don't know what you're talking about. No homo. Somebody said no homo, but I love you, man. I guess he doesn't want to join the free Facebook group. Okay. Oh, this guy, love your stuff, but I'm literally on buying your program had been burned in the past. How do you love the free stuff, but you don't think our training for our clients would work, but yet the free stuff works? Hmm. Well, you can stay in the same situation you're in. So when you say you've been burned in the past, well, you know why you've been burned in the past? Because you've bought sales training that doesn't work. You bought sales training that's traditional sales training that triggers sales resistance. And you're damn right it's not going to work. So you're damn right you're going to get burned in the past. We don't have clients that say that. There's a reason why we have over 11,000 testimonials in the last 30 months. That's more than any other sales training company in the United States right now. Go find a sales training company that's got over 11,000 testimonials in their entire existence. There's companies that have been around for 40 years and we have more testimonials than OK, the reason why Inc. Magazine ranked us the fastest growing sales training company in 2021 and in 2020 and more than likely in 2022, because our clients get crazy results. That's why we have so many testimonials. So if you like the free stuff, which is just little hors d'oeuvres, little um, little nibbles, can you imagine what you'll learn once you go through our virtual training courses and group training? It's like 10 billion times what I do on these free reels that you guys watch. OK, so if you want to double, triple, quadruple what you're doing, well, you're going to have to learn the skills to do that. Right. OK, love you guys. We are going to go live tomorrow in the Facebook group. So if you're on IG or TikTok, you'll have to join the Facebook group to hear that live. I don't go live on 
IG and TikTok more than once a week. In the Facebook group, I go live in there almost four times a week now. OK, so if you want uh, to go there, I'm going to interview we, every week. We interview one to two clients and we break down their sales process. So the gentleman I'm going to be interviewing tomorrow was brand new in sales six months ago. And now he's up almost to 40 grand a month in commissions with what he sells. And he sells pools. He's a W-2 employee. He sells home improvement pools. He's not up to 40 grand a month in commissions. It's not his industry. The average person's industry makes four to five grand a month. It's his skill level. That he's acquired as a client. So we're going to go live tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific Standard, and we're going to break down a sales process. And he's assured me he's going to give you some really big golden nuggets for showing up. All right. So make sure you join the Facebook group if you want to hear that interview. Love you guys. Message me directly if you want to sell more. If you don't want to sell more, you don't have to. It's a free world. You can keep getting punched in the face, objection after objection, and lots of rejection, and not make that much money. Or you can learn advanced skills. You can sell two, three, four more times than you are now. And the best part is you help your prospects solve their problems and get the results they want. If you can't learn how to sell to your prospects, you are letting them down because they stay in the status quo. Their problems stay the same and nothing ever changes. And that's your responsibility as a professional salesperson to learn those skills, to be able to sell to them. Okay. Love you guys. Get out of here. We'll see you tomorrow. TikTok. We love you guys. See you guys tomorrow. Merry Christmas. Uh, Facebook group. We'll see you guys tomorrow. YouTube, LinkedIn. Uh, we will go live in those platforms. So make sure you join the Facebook group. TikTok. If you're, if you want to be on the rest of the week, we're only go live in the Facebook group. So go to salesrevolution.pro. Uh, go to salesrevolution.pro if you're on IG and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Love you guys.